Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping them. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. As Gunther has overtaken the honky tonk man's legendary intercontinental title reign today we're going to debate on while yes gunther has the record for the longest reign has it actually been better than the honky tonk man's reign that is the question that we will pose and try to answer on today's episode so we're going to do a few different metrics for this just to make it fair as these two are both incredibly different professional wrestlers that wrestled in vastly different times and eras. So we'll start with the Honky Tonk Man's first, well, start with him first. So Honky Tonk Man takes the belt originally off of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. The reign was actually supposed to be a transitional reign to Butch Reed. However, something had happened and that was not the direction that WWE ended up going with. Honky Tonk Man had a lot of stuff happen in his reign that I don't think gets enough credit. The birth of the Mega Powers was something that stemmed out of that run for the Honky Tonk Man. And an another interesting tidbit is throughout the run of the Honky Tonk Man, he did lose quite a bit, actually, but he did retain the title in, the in those losses. So, Colin, I know you are a, a huge uh Gunther fan as I'm sure most of the people watching and listening to this podcast how do you feel about this like let, let's go and sound off here i i think i think Gunther's is, is I, they're in two different eras that's the biggest problem um honky's happened before i was born um, his was from 87 to 88. I wasn't born until 90. Um, you're really that young. Thanks. I am that young. Yes. Now, uh, he, so, so this happened before I was born. So for me, like, and I've never been a big fan of that era anyways of wrestling. I, I, I preferred attitude era onward. Um, and obviously the era, era right before the Attitude Era was um, lovely. It was not. It was terrible. Um, so I, I think Gunther's... Obviously, Gunther's isn't over yet. B, there's probably a lot... It, it's kind of a mixed bag, because you're fighting rose-tinted glasses of the past um, with, you know, recency bias. So this is really an interesting uh, a pairing, but I'm going to go with Gunther. Yeah, my bias of uh, being a Gunther fan probably doesn't help, and I'm, I was never a fan of the Honky Tonk Man. His era was before my time, really. Um, but uh, I bet Honky Tonk had uh, some better people that he beat, though. Well, you would be correct, as... The run originally started against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, while Gunther started against Ricochet. Yes, Ricochet is an amazing athlete and a really good wrestler, but he's not Ricky Steamboat. <laughs> there's, there's a vast difference in talent here. But nonetheless, I think Honky Tonk Man gets the nod for the better start mm -hmm. to the to the run. And this is really tricky because again Gunther is still going yeah. and he may go several more months I don't know how much longer he's going to have it but with the honky tonk man he had several good rivalries throughout the run that he had with the intercontinental title Randy Savage Brutus Beefcake Jake the Snake Roberts just to name a few Gunther has had a handful of guys that have been really good right now. We don't know if they're all time great because he has victories in this run over Chad Gable, Shinsuke Nakamura, 
Ricochet, Braun Strowman, Sheamus, Rey Mysterio. Guys that maybe years from now, yeah, they get all in the Hall of Fame. Right. Ray is in the Hall of Fame right now. But I don't know, like, most notably, and I want to know how you feel about this. I feel once Gunther loses the belt, two things will be remembered. Hmm. One, that he broke the record. And two, the loss. I think everything else will get overshadowed. We'll just remember those two things. And if you recall, without doing research for this, like that's really the only two things you remember from Honky Tonk Man was the length of the record and that surprising loss to the Ultimate Warrior. I feel like that's... I feel like that's a lot of titles, though. Unless it's something super memorable. Most people are just like, oh yeah, uh, he... His title reign was, you know, ridiculous. Like, especially the short reigns where it's like, oh, he held it for a day or something. Um, so the biggest thing that goes in Honky's favor is the IC title was valued, I feel like, drastically higher back in the 80s than it is now. First off, there's so many titles. There's two-ish Three, four, I'm, I'm re- losing track of how many A titles there are at this point. I I don't know how they're keeping track of them. Whereas the IC is more of a B title. It's down there with the US titles and the tag titles. It's right. Uh, honestly, I'd put the tags at a C at this point because I don't think most people care about them. Um, but it's down there around that range. Um, and honestly, if you look at A titles, you can count the women's titles as well. Just like there's so many. Um Whereas in the in the eighties, there was just WWE, and then the IC was like second. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was roughly what it was. I mean, there was a few no, you're right. few other mid card titles there, but it, you know, it was the second biggest one. It was far more valuable than it is now, where it's sixth, fifth. Like you know, it's it's really just kind of there up until they brought back the heavyweight title. It was just there as like, oh, Roman's gone for a while, so here comes Gunther. He's our new guy for a while. Like, that's kind of how it was, and that's a problem because while this is very impressive um, to hold it on this long, we know how WWE tends to like to occasionally hot shot titles all over the place and, you know... Um, the fact that he said, uh, I don't know what WWE's, uh, got going on over there, but apparently they just, nobody's allowed to, you know, steal titles anymore. Like once they're on somebody, they're staying on somebody for a while. So, well, I think that feeds into what we've been saying on this podcast for several episodes now, and that's WWE is in the process of rewriting their history books and honky tonk man has come and gone with his reign and, I I want to ask you, who do you feel made the Intercontinental title feel more important and elevated the title more? Do you feel Gunther with his reign, or do you think Honky Tonk Man did it with his reign? And I, I think I think we're both going to agree on the same person, but I, I would like you to give your answer first. I'm going to say Gunther, just because it was already elevated with Honky Tonk. Whereas with Gunther, it feels, I feel like before Gunther got it, it was a forgotten title that was just kind of there. Yes, like, I think Rollins had it for a while and did some stuff with it. The Miz was always, you know, in and around that, and he always did what he could to make it better. But man, people really care now with Gunther. And and yeah, I think that helps that the Bloodline storyline is kind of, you know... Well, kind of hemmed and hawed about whether they're going to be a big deal or not. Boy, I want to talk about that. Um, Keep in mind, (laughs) in this last Royal Rumble, Gunther, the Intercontinental Champion, I believe came in number two. Something like that, yeah. Or no, I'm sorry, he was number one. He was number one. I thought Rollins was one. Was Rollins? He had a, all right, regardless, Gunther had a very early entry. Yeah. And had a very good showing in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. He was right neck and neck with a man in Cody Rhodes that is soon to be presumably the face of the WWE, the next 
face of the WWE. Who uh, only had to be in there for like 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> but but the, the thing was, even though Cody had been in there such a short period of time, from the psychology standpoint of how this got booked, it took so much more for Cody to beat Gunther and just get him thrown over the top ropes. Like they, they fought for a very long period of time when it came down to just those two. I don't think if, if you go back and look, I don't think honky tonk man really had anything in his reign that resembled that. Now, again, the biggest thing that came out of honky tonk man's reign was the mega powers, right? The formation of arguably the most star studded tag team and professional wrestling to date. But Really, Gunther has, I mean, the match quality, I think it, it's a landslide. Gunther's the better wrestler. I don't think yeah. it's a hot take or a debatable topic. Like, right. if you have even <clears throat> slightly functioning vision, you can see <laughs> that Gunther is a better wrestler than Honky Tonk Man. Right. And I think Honky was, he was a product of his era compared to now. What do you mean? <sighs> The wrestling back then was more, I feel like it was more storytelling and less skill-based. Like, you really look at it like Hulk Hogan's uh, finisher was a leg drop. That is a nothing now. Um, You talk about the other part of the Mega Powers. You got, you know, Macho Man. His was a an elbow drop from the top rope. Yeah. I mean, more powerful than the leg drop, but still, really a nothing burger now. That d- doesn't do much. That's not... Honestly, it's not even a train. It's just there. Like, if people do it, it's like, oh, hey, look, that was cool. Seen that about a thousand times. Do something original. Um, like, whereas now, the level of talent has skyrocketed. The amount of skill it takes to put a, perform these moves, I feel like, has exponentially grown you you can't just have leg drops you just can't have clotheslines really um and he's actually a different breed than what we normally see he's more of a, a you know a brawling you know very physical um sort of wrestler whereas a lot of people you kind of look at um like your seth rollins who's more of a high flyer and a, a, you know runs around the ring and does a lot of that stuff that's not really gunther's style and it does kind of bring you back a little bit to the old days. But, I, yeah, I feel like it takes a lot more skill uh, in in Gunther's era than in Honky's era, um, especially nowadays. It's just there's so much you need to be a good wrestler and stand out versus back then. You had the gimmicks mm-hmm. I'll give you back then to get you over as a talent and... Right benefit your matches yeah gunther like and and the thing is i think in comparison i know there's several years decades really separating these two and in professional wrestling but yeah overall gunther i think has had and i no slight to honky tonk man just gunther's had a more impressive reign like (coughs) excuse me he didn't get the well to this date he doesn't have the hall of fame record against the talent that he's beaten but match wise and and in ring work gunther isn't going to get touched by honky tonk man and i'm i'm wondering how when they eventually decide to pull the trigger on the loss for gunther i feel because the way wrestling works today gunther will be better positioned to succeed after losing the intercontinental title than what honky tonk man because really if, if you think about every contribution he has made, it stops at the the reign for the Intercontinental Championship. He didn't really provide much right. outside of that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, and he ran into uh he ran into a backstage power. Um you know, he got squashed, which <sighs> when you've held the title that long, you would think you'd have some modicum of respect to get at least a decent match. And the guy you lost to is somebody who honestly For, at, in that time frame in that era was very questionable as far as backstage antics and stuff he did here and there. Um and no, and no disrespect, but 
I feel like you're absolutely right. When Gunther loses, it's going... It, it, first off, people are going to lose their mind if it's a squash, so it's not going to be. Um, it's going to be a very competitive match. It'll so probably we, be... So we think. We hope. Um, it'll probably be on a big stage, your your Rumble, your WrestleMania, somewhere in that range. It's going to be a big stage. And more than likely, he will jump into a main event scene. Either the, the heavyweight title with uh, Rollins or being a part of that big old pile of gobbledygook that is the bloodline storyline or whatever they're doing right now. I, I know you're, you're itching to talk you're, about the, the bloodline thing, but this we're, we're staying sorry, focused. Good there. We are now talking about the bloodline. So Jimmy, <laughs> you know, we're going to stay focused on, on Gunther. I, I do want to add in with Gunther. I feel the loss is going to mean significantly more when it happens because I don't I didn't have a problem with how Honky Tonk Man lost. It was a surprise loss to a very believable opponent. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, this individual went on to main event WrestleMania against Hulk Hogan and got a victory over Hogan right. clean on WrestleMania. <clears throat> so it's not like they did nothing. With the mm -hmm. gentleman that beat Honky Tonk Man, right. I'm hoping the same courtesy is extended to the individual that beats Gunther. But overall, I, I think comparing this, I do not think Honky Tonk Man, as a collective body of work, right. had a better run as champion than Gunther. Now, there were moments that were really good and special, like, the, again, the formation of the Mega Powers and Honky Tonk Man losing the title. Really, that's where it begins and stops. Gunther, he's had the matches with Gable most recently. The Royal Rumble spot, and when, when he eventually loses it, whenever that time is. I mean, I don't, I can't think of a, any more comparisons than that. I would say Honky Tonk Man has some victories in this match. But overall, yeah, I think Gunther takes it. There's, and the and the th and the problem for uh, um, future comparisons with the Honky Tonk Man is Gunther's body of work is only going to get better when these people retire. We start seeing some Hall of Fame nods towards more of these people. He's got one compared to Lord knows how many that Honky Tonk Man has. Um, and the biggest problem is that all of Honky Tonk Man's contemporaries are all retired. All of them are gone. They've all long since. We know who's in the Hall of Fame. There's, It's unlikely that any of them that are left that aren't in the Hall of Fame are getting in at this point, realistically. I mean, it was 35 years ago um, that his title reign ended. Uh, so, I, yeah, Gunther's is going to get all... It, it, his body of work... Um, and everything that comes with it is only going to get better when we start putting in some of these guys in the Hall of Fame. I And again, I, I would echo all of that as well. Well, I think this is a pretty good stopping point for this episode as... So anyway, the Bloodline story. <laughs> God, not yet. We'll, we're going to have that talk eventually, and I, I think there's going to be a lot of feathers that get ruffled, but it is not yet time to discuss that mm -hmm. and its place in history and what it means just yet. I'm just talking about this week. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> we have other episodes to get that discussed on, and yeah, uh, I get it. guys in the comments. Let us know. Sound off. Who do you think has had the better reign, the more impressive run with the Intercontinental Championship? Has it been the Honky Tonk Man or has it been Gunther? Let us know in the comments below. And for Colin and myself, Scott, we will see you guys on the next episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. <laughs>